Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing absolutely fantastic out there. So, today on the podcast, from the office, we are going to talk about the APU. What do we use it for? Are there any uh, emergency checklists connected to it? And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to actually start it up and what to think about. So stay tuned. I think you're going to love this one. Right, everybody. So the APU. What is it? Well, it stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. And what it is, basically, it is a small engine sitting in the back of the aircraft of the 737. Okay. Now, if you think about it, uh, if you drive your car, for example, and it's really hot outside, and you want to put the air conditioning on, you know that the engine is going to have to be running in order for the air conditioning to be working. Now, the aircraft works exactly the same. However, we can't have the big engines running in order to run, for example, the air conditioning unit. So we have solved that by adding another tiny little jet engine in the back of the aircraft. And what that jet engine actually does is it produces both electrical power and it produces air for cooling, for example, air conditioning, but also for pressurizing the, uh, the tanks to avoid cavitation of the pumps, which I'll talk about in a different podcast and anything that is needed or that needs pressurized air. One of those things is starting the other engines. Okay, so when we're on the ground, we tend to use what's called a GPU, which is a ground power unit. Now, the ground power unit produces the, the same type of electrical power that the engine, or sorry, that the APU is doing, but of course it's using way less fuel, it's more economical to run, so we tend to use that. But whenever we need to switch on the air, to so the air conditioning, for example, when there's a very hot outside, like it is today, uh, then we need to start the uh, auxiliary power unit in order to provide that air. So if you've ever boarded an aircraft and you thought that it was really, really hot and everyone is kind of going up for the gas per outlets and trying to open them, but there's no real air, it's just a little bit of air coming, but there's no cooling air coming. Well, that is because the air, uh, the APU has not been started or you are not connected to external air, which you can connect as well to get um, to get um, air cooled, right? So if you go to, for example, bigger airports down in the south of Spain, they will have external air conditioned air connected to the um, aircraft. But in most smaller airports, it is only going to be the APU that is providing that air conditioned air, okay? So that is why just maybe 10 minutes prior to uh, your scheduled departure time, the copy crew will go up and they will start the APU and you can see in this one it's actually not working so in order for us to start the engine on this particular aircraft we actually need a um, an air starter unit but that's something i'm going to talk about in a different podcast but anyway so about 10 minutes prior to departure or earlier if it's if you feel that it's really hot inside the cabin we start up the apu which i'll show you in a couple of minutes and when the apu has been running for a little bit it's going to show up here on the electrical panel that it is producing the electrical power uh, needed then we are going to put that on the buses and that is going to disconnect the previous power source which in normal case is going to be the ground power unit then we need to uh, to wait for about a minute before uh, we can use the APU as a bleed air source and that's to let all of the internal components in the APU get heated up to the optimum temperature so we're not putting too much stress on the APU um, immediately Okay, so there's always these kind of rules involved. It takes one minute for the APU to be uh, properly heated up. And then the, the way that the starter is working, and I'm gonna explain that in detail uh, very soon, but basically the APU is extremely uh, simple to run. It has a completely automatic startup sequence. We only have to put it to start and the jet engine starts by opening the air inlet door in the back takes about 30 seconds to do and then when that's fully open then it's going to start the starter sequence uh, which you will see um, by the EGT starting to rise and then the EGT will slowly decrease down to a um, down to the normal working temperature and once it's reached the normal working temperature then we'll be able to use it as a power source all right use for so APU auxiliary power unit small jet engine in the back which is providing electrical power and or pneumatical power, so for engine starting, for example. 
we can use it both for an air source, as an air source and as an electrical source, up to 10,000 feet in flight. So you can provide all the electrical power needed and all the air power needed for the aircraft up to 10,000 feet. We can use it as a bleed air source only, as in not with the electrical power up to 17,000 feet. And it can be used as an electrical source all the way up to the maximum certified ceiling of uh, 41,000 feet. So it's a great little uh, thing, uh, it's very helpful because for the aircraft that I'm in now, for example, in order to start this aircraft, we are going to have to use the air starter unit connected. We're gonna have to start one engine on the stand, then push back the aircraft and do a cross bleed start, which basically involves increasing the thrust on the running engine uh, in, until we have enough bleed air to actually use the bleed air from the running engine to start the, um, the other engine up. So uh, that's what we use them for, that's what we use the APU for. Now, let's have a look on how we actually start the APU. Enjoy. Hi guys, let's have a look at how we start the APU. Here we have the APU start button. You put it momentarily to the start position and you leave it in the on. And as you can see, the EDT meter is now activated. The low oil pressure light comes on to indicate that the oil pressure is low, which is normal during the start attempt. After about 30 seconds or actually a little bit less, the door in the back is now open and the automatic starting sequence starts. And here you can see that the fuel has been uh, let into the APU. The EGT is increasing to about 700 degrees Celsius. And here is the electrical panel. In this case, the ground power is connected to the bus. So what we're waiting for now is for the EGT to decrease to the APU's operational temperature of about 400 degrees Celsius. And once it reaches 400, feet, uh, 400 degrees, we will see that the um, APU power becomes available, which it does there. And we can then select it onto bus number one and bus number two. Then we start our timing and we wait for about one minute before using it at the bleed source. When the one minute is up, we can go up to our uh, air conditioning panel. We start by checking that the isolation valve is open and then we put the APU bleed on. And as you can see in the duct pressure here, the duct pressure now increases in both the left and the right duct, which means that we now have air flowing. And that, my friends, is how we start the APU. Right guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked that uh, little view from the office. Uh, I am back home again. So remember to subscribe to the channel if you like it. There's going to be much more content coming up very shortly and I think you're going to like everything of it. And also uh, have a look at my Instagram account if you want to follow my day-to-day -day life. I've put up some quite nice pictures from, from what I see in the flight deck and stuff like that. So until next time, have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.